Open Carry Wednesday is a, um, an idea that we have at the Cajun Experience in Leesburg, Virginia, uh, that allows our patrons to come into our restaurant openly carrying their sidearm based off the laws of Virginia. They can come in and have a meal and we give them 10% off. Hello, I'm Helen Holliman. I am joined today by Brian Crosswhite, the founder of 2AO.org or SecondAmendment.org, a pro-gun rights uh, business owner's website. Is that the correct introduction? We are a pro-business, I'm sorry, pro-Second Amendment business organization. We are a, not a gun rights organization, but a pro-rights, Second Amendment rights organization. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. So, you know, first of all, first and foremost, you are a restaurant owner, a former chef. Tell me about how you started this website and what exactly goes on on this website. Okay, so we started the organization around the first of the year. So January, around January 1st, um, we decided to let people know in, uh, in our community who are pro-Second Amendment what businesses are pro-Second Amendment friendly. So we decided to do a database online and uh, invite people to sign up their businesses in a very balanced way, uh, a very balanced approach, put it that way. We have no guns on our logo. It's very pro-rights uh, approach at how we're doing this. And um, we started and we, when we did it the next day, the, we had a media outlet out of Washington DC, a national newspaper, pick up the article and it went viral and we started getting over a business a minute registering on our database. And it was just a very small idea and it went viral. So, and that's where we're at today. We have over 10,000 members and within 30 days that's registered. How many of those businesses are restaurants? I don't have the exact percentage of the categories because it's moving so fast. But I will tell you that I've reviewed some of the database and there's a lot of restaurants in the, in, in the uh, database that are signing up. Because of what they've seen in the media, there's been some restaurants that have the anti-gun uh, so signs on their restaurant. And they feel like they would like to have those who believe in the Second Amendment and want to exercise their right to come and dine at their restaurants. So. Like Toby Keith? Yeah, Toby Keith's restaurant <laughs> is uh, one of that, uh, I wouldn't say it started the idea. Um, there was two police officers that got kicked out of Buffalo Wild Wings in uh, Virginia for carrying their sidearms. And, and that's what started my restaurant doing Open Carry Wednesday over a year ago. So, you know, before we get further into that, how many organizations across the U.S. are participating in this website? organizations okay. or companies? Companies, business owners. Oh, business owners, like I said, we're, we're right about 10,000 right now, mm -hmm. and we have about another 5,000 individual members of so our organization. So how many, um, by, like which states are participating? Every state is Every already state. participated. Okay, yep. wow. You started this primarily from that incident, or you know, what led you to wanna So what reason is because of my restaurant doing Open Carry Wednesday for now a year, a lot of people calling and saying, hey, what's the other businesses that support the Second Amendment? Really didn't have an answer. And so we were just like, well, why don't we give it a shot and try it? And we launched the website with a single page. It just had a logo on it. And it got, like I said, picked up by mainstream media and went viral. We had to immediately create a website. So took two hours, had a lot of site up, and people were registering. So it was very shocking for me because I didn't think people would be so open to this. What is Open Carry Wednesday? Open Carry Wednesday is a, um, an idea that we have at the Cajun Experience in Leesburg, Virginia, uh, that allows our patrons to come into our restaurant openly carrying their sidearm based off the laws of Virginia. They can come in as long as it's holstered, they can come in and have a meal, and we give them 10% off by exercising their right. So this is what we do. Also, you can conceal carry, which we don't know who's concealed carrying at any time, but if they show us their permit, 
of being able to conceal carry, which the state of Virginia requires that to conceal carry, you have to have a permit. Once they show us that, they also get 10% off. And we only do this on Wednesdays. Any other day of the week that you're open, are they allowed to come in and bring their guns in? Absolutely. I mean, I still have people every day that open carry, because Virginia is known for that. Um, you'll see a lot of people open carrying these days. And so we don't, we don't frown upon it. They don't get the discount any day except for Wednesdays. But as a restaurant owner, I don't frown upon them coming in <clears throat> carrying their sidearm or uh, concealed carrying it. What kind of food do you cook at the Cajun Experience? South Louisiana Cajun food. And I make sure I say South Louisiana or my mom would be very upset. <laughs> so. So, yeah, Cajun, you know, boudin and boudin, etouffee. Etouffee, jambalaya, seafood gumbo, um, uh, bread pudding, b uh, beignets, you know, the typical Cajun food that you'll find down in around Lafayette, Louisiana. How would you describe the types of patrons that come into your restaurant who are open carrying? Women. I would say middle-aged women uh, are the main people who come into my restaurant open carrying and it's very surprising to me but there's been so many instances in the United States of home invasions where women are the target that we have seen a huge increase in our state of women getting their concealed carry permits or starting to open carry so we're seeing families open carry I mean, what I mean by that is the parents open carrying um, we see law enforcement people coming into our restaurant, open care, and we're big on our law enforcement. We support our local law enforcement community. And since we're in Northern Virginia, typically we're gonna have the military and the Pentagon and um, the government people. So we see a lot of those former military and active military people coming in and open carrying. Do any of your servers or any of your restaurant staff, are they allowed to open carry on the clock? No, no, not at all. I mean, it is a work environment where um, I, I can still carry in my restaurant um, as a management. You know, I'm the one, as an owner, I will come in concealed carrying, uh, but I'm not, I, I do not allow my management or any of my staff members to do that on, on the clock. Uh, if they come in as a, off the clock, yeah, that's fine, but um, we serve a, a mixed community. So the people left of the Second Amendment they still come to my restaurant because they love the food. Even though they may disagree, the way we go about doing this is, you know, we let people know. They understand that this is a controversial issue. It doesn't bring people away from my restaurant. So we go, you know, we tell people, if we see them looking at someone, hey, why are they carrying a gun? We go and explain it. And we say, look, this is only, you know, something that we do and promote on Wednesdays. So please understand it. And they're everyone is pretty much open to it and they understand that this, you know, this is a controversial issue and we're just taking a stance for um, the Second Amendment. But um, other than that, no, we, we don't allow, I would never allow my staff to, oh, yeah, that would freak people out walking up to a table with a gun, so. So, I mean, do you feel like some people might consider this a PR gimmick of some sort? Absolutely, and, and we, We've got a lot of press from this, and it's been very good for us, for our business from a press perspective. Um, but on the other hand, it wasn't intended that way. It was intended to make a statement that business owners can stand up for their rights, especially when we feel that our rights are starting to be taken away from us. And uh, most of my customers are hunters. We're in you know northern um, Loudoun, or sorry, western Loudoun County, so we have a lot of hunters there, and so people feel every day that things going on on Capitol Hill is taking our rights away. So this is, this is our stance. So that's what we, the reason we did this. And plus because of the police officers. When they when got kicked out, we just felt like that was wrong to ask a police officer uh, to not have a sidearm. I'm in New York and going to a restaurant and there's officers in there carrying their gun. I mean, who dares tell them to, to take their gun off and leave it in their car? So, you know, in terms of firearms that are actually allowed in, what kinds of guns are allowed into the restaurant space? Well, we don't allow rifles, okay, or anything like that, or shotguns or nothing like that. This is just sidearms, and this is uh, the only thing. You know, we've had one guy show up with an AR-15 trying to make a political statement, and we've asked him to leave because that's not the place for for doing that. That is, you know, there, there's certain people that are pro-Second Amendment that takes it extreme, take the extreme approach on things. Look, 
we're moderate people. We understand that it's going to be sensitive. We ask that it's just only a sidearm. So if it is like legally licensed to him, he, how do you kind of circumvent that in terms of, do you have a sign or? No, no, we just approach it. And people now know that, you know, we're not the type that's, this is not a publicity stunt. Uh, this is something that we take pretty serious. And uh, so they know not to come in with a, uh, you know, an AR-15 and into our restaurant. It's not the place for that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been a lot of school shootings. You know, last year there were 28. Um, in January of 2014, there have been 11 school shootings. Two people were shot in a grocery store last month. Two people were shot in a mall last month. Does it concern you that this might be a possibility in your space at the restaurant. It would never happen in my space. Who would, in their right mind, would come into my restaurant knowing that there's patrons in there carrying guns and going to come into my restaurant and do something like that? Um, that's like walking onto an, a military base and trying to open fire and bomb a military base when you have the military locked and loaded. You wouldn't do that. So with us promoting this, this is one of the safest places to have your lunch and dinner on Wednesdays. And it's safe every day of the week because we don't tell people not to carry in our restaurant, so it's allowed. How do you deal with alcohol and guns in the same space? Because, you mm -hmm. know, let's say there is a customer who gets drunk right. and maybe they get heated and, you know, legally and then just in the atmosphere of the space, how do you deal with that combination of a lethal weapon and Yep, sure. Um, be more than happy to talk. The, the law says in Virginia that if you open carry or can, uh, open carry, you can actually drink alcohol in a restaurant. Um, that's the law. Uh, we as business owners can also say we will not serve someone who's open carrying. So we we tell our staff not to allow people to do that. So we don't serve alcohol during that time period or to those who are open carrying. And most people who are open carrying will not do that anyway because they understand that this is a rights issue. They're not about to screw it up. Plus, they're not gonna take a risk of getting in their car after having a drink and driving home with a loaded weapon and getting pulled over by the police. It's just a, uh, these people, I wanna make sure this is clear. These are law-abiding citizens. So these are people that you, you see, you know, the soccer moms, you see, you know, family people. These are, that's the people who are open carrying in our restaurant. So uh, we don't, it's not the type of people that would come into our restaurant and hold up the place or get drunk and start shooting. It's not the Wild West, so. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had any kind of incident where you've had to send someone out and, you know, anything is engaged like that? Never. So, you know, it's interesting because um, with the idea of a restaurant space and identity, um, you think about, you know, there's gender identity, um, race identity, things like that. But in terms of this openly political kind of statement about your views, do you feel that it is... Um, affects the kind of clientele that you receive because, you know, how do your patrons kind of enter into this space and react to that? No, um, like I said, most people, they really don't notice it on the uh, outside of Wednesdays. On Wednesdays, we have a lot of people open carrying and it's pretty obvious. But other than that, you don't notice and you don't know when someone's concealed carrying. People who come into my restaurant are mainly concealed carrying just like any other state, there's 39 states um, in the United States that allow concealed carry. You don't know, once you go across that border into that state, if there's someone you're talking to is gonna be concealed carrying. And there, most people who, are who concealed carry has a permit, they have a background check done, and mostly are trained to understand the circumstances of why when to use their weapon or when not to use their weapon. It's very discouraged to use your weapon uh, when we go through the training for concealed carry. So my patrons on Wednesdays, like I said, are open carrying. That's mainly that day. But other than that, you wouldn't even notice it. In other states, um, you know, excluding Virginia, you know, are there different guns that are allowed into the spaces or 
that happens, that has to be uh, up to the owner of that establishment. So if it's a privately owned business, it's up to them at their discretion, just like Toby Keith has every right to say no guns are allowed in my restaurant in, in uh, Virginia. That's, that's, that's his right. I respect him for that. I truly respect him. Just in, in turn, I would hope that people would respect me for my views, and that's what makes America great. We all believe in the Constitution, and we all believe in our laws. Some people just disagree with our laws. I'm on one that I believe that we should obey our laws and encourage our laws. Um, so that's my stance. So I don't, I'm never going to judge someone here for not carrying uh, or not allowing you know, their patrons to carry in their restaurants. I guess what I'm getting at is, could you bring a assault rifle into another state, in theory, if it was licensed and owned by someone into another restaurant space, not in Virginia, but another state? An assault weapon, you'd have to define what an assault weapon is. An assault weapon is defined as a fully automatic weapon, which is illegal unless you have a federal tag for that, and it's federally, federally registered. And to have that, I'm not certain on the law whether you can, you can carry that openly. I believe, and I'm just speaking out of something that I have heard, I don't believe that's legal to carry that. Now, if you want to carry it from one state to another, you have to check with the state laws. But um, an assault weapon is a fully automatic machine gun, uh, not an AR-15. And uh, the AR-15s that you see on the news that people go into and they're shooting, are not assault weapons. How have you received any feedback from patrons who aren't, you know, carrying guns into the restaurant about the dining experience? Like walk me through excluding guns, like when I walk into the Cajun experience, like what does it feel like inside? Um, it's a house I was built in the 1740s. It's the second oldest house in Leesburg, Virginia. Um, it's a, a house that you would see in many old paintings from the Civil War days and before. Um, you walk into the front door, there's two rooms on the, on the first floor. There's probably, I think we have uh, eight tables downstairs and about uh, 12 tables to 15 tables upstairs. Um, so it's a two-story building. The kitchen is a small nine, nine foot kitchen in the side, back side of the restaurant. Um, very rustic, it makes you feel like you're down in the bayou and that's kind of the way we've set it up for decor, the decor of the restaurant. When you walk in, you're going to feel like you're in Louisiana. What is the best dish on your menu? The best dish on the menu is crawfish etouffee by far. Uh, that is one of our top sellers. A jambalaya comes in second, but the crawfish etouffee is amazing. And are they all your recipes, or how did they come yeah. about? Uh, it's about eight generations worth of recipes, because my uh, family is all Cajun. Uh, from South Louisiana, and we go back a long ways. So these uh, recipes were handed down through history, and uh, I use a lot of those recipes from uh, my Darbone and Guillot side of my family. And so getting back to 2AO, you know, it, this is going to become an iPhone app, is that right? As well yeah. as an iPad app? It's an iPhone and, and or iOS and uh, Android app that uh, basically uh, it's, we don't publish all our members on a website we, because you know, we don't want, we do respect people's privacy as well. Uh, some people are sensitive to that. So with the iPhone and Android app, you can press a button, say here in New York City, which we have businesses in New York City already registered. Um, you can press a button on the phone and it will show you in a 25 mile radius all of those businesses that are pro Second Amendment. And it doesn't show you who's not. So I want to make sure this is not about, well, they should or shouldn't. It just shows you those people who, be who believe in our Second Amendment. And um, that's the ones we're just connecting our you know, patrons to those businesses. It's just a networking opportunity to network with people that are like-minded. Is there any kind of open forum that's happening inside of the website? Or no, discussion? we don't have an open forum. We do have a Facebook page and a Twitter, and, uh, but we really control our message. We, you know, discussions about this is done from, a, from more local chapters that we have established throughout the states. What is your vision for the site 
let's say, over projected the next five years? What do you see happening? Yeah, so our big, our, we, we've just had a, a conference call last night about it, and it was really interesting. We're talking about what can we do to help grow the economy? We're having discussions about that. So, you know, we have these like-minded business owners. I'll support the Second Amendment. We, we all stand for the Second Amendment. But on the other hand, if you partner with other people in the business community, you can strengthen your own local community. So we're looking at it from an economic growth standpoint by tying in consumers to those businesses. So we're seeing a lot of opportunity there, a lot of um, um, partnerships that, I like for instance, I have the Cajun Experience in Leesburg. There may be a baker that I don't know about who is in my community, he signs up, I may go to him and buy my bread because we're like-minded, we're gonna do business together. So this is a way to bring those, those businesses together and that's what we see as the vision and also we wanna have an educational side of our of our organization where we educate people about the Second Amendment and about these hot, hot topics that are going on in D.C. right now. And we want to make sure that people understand this is, there is another side of the story. They should hear our side and maybe they'll understand. And if you could say, I mean, on your side of the story, what do you feel is underrepresented oftentimes? You know, I think, you know, you, you brought up all of the shootings that have gone on and, and you know, we, we're saddened by that and that, that doesn't, it's, it's bad for humanity. And, but one thing I'll tell you, the Second Amendment is so important to a business owner. It, it, if, you, if those businesses, we'll just take one for instance, if the, um, the mall in Maryland that just had a shooting and three people died, they, they have a law in the state of Maryland that says you can't have a sidearm you know, concealed or can, you know, openly carry. But if there was, if that mall was in the state of Virginia, more than likely this wouldn't have happened because the store owner could have had a gun he was concealed carrying or someone who was in the mall at the time, right when the incident was, ha incident was happened, they can actually protect themselves and they would have been able to take down the, the guy who was doing this. Sad, but it's true that there's both sides of the story. Um, so it, it affects my business. If I wasn't able to have a concealed carry in the state of Virginia, I would feel very um, nervous about my business. I have public people coming in. I feel like I can't protect my patrons. Um, and I'm not the authority. I'm not the law enforcement. I believe in the law enforcement, but I have to call the law enforcement for them to come. And they're going to come after someone shot and killed. And there could have been something I could have taken care of and helped save lives by having a firearm. Uh, this past November, a uh, news report said that two men forced entry into your restaurant and stole seven rifles and shotguns. Mm -hmm. Have those been returned to your possession or yes. are they at large? No, absolutely. We've, we've, we've recovered every single thing. And um, the great thing was uh, every one of them was taken off the street. Uh, we have security cameras. And the story, it was really interesting. We don't keep firearms on premise. Um, that's a rule that we have. But what happened was I live in the District of Columbia and you're not allowed to have guns there. And I went deer hunting the day, a few days before the incident that happened. And so we were coming back from our deer camp and fisting across into, into the district, which would be breaking the law. And we said, oh man, we can't do this. And the guy who keeps our guns in Virginia was not home, so we decided the only place we could do it is let's keep them at the restaurant for a couple of days. So we went and locked them up where, in a locked closet away from all the customers. It's an area that's not used, and we locked it up there. And it just happened that an old employee from the history, didn't know about our guns or anything like that, was looking for the safe, and that's where we used to keep the safe. And he brought some guys in, and they robbed us, and instead of finding the safe, they found some guns. and. That, was, that could have been a tragic story. Those guns could have been used in crimes. And that was an, I would say we should have had a, a better lock. We should have had, there's a lot of things that I'm guilty for, you know, I could have kept them protected. But um, luckily we were able to get those guns back and um, take those guys off the streets. I think, you know, something uh, that I wonder about is what if someone came into the restaurant during, you know, Open Carry Wednesday and grabbed a gun from somebody, you know, and who knows, maybe it's an impossible task where they like fight someone. And, right. But I mean, lo, what if that happens? I mean, does that ever concern you that they... Well, well it, can be, it can be looked at a different way as well. 
Uh, I'm in New York City. There's police officers having breakfast in the place that I was eating breakfast this morning. Someone could come in there and grab their sidearm. Are we worried about that? What's the difference between those guys and people who are concealed carrying? They're trained. We have, you know, I would tell you that 90 something percent of the people in Virginia who are concealed carrying are trained with the sidearm. And I mean, that's our state. I can't speak for other states, but I can only speak on, uh, on behalf of my patrons. Everything is possible, but I'll tell you if someone did try to do that, there would be a lot more protection inside that restaurant than if it was someone walked in and no one was armed and perpetrated a crime. So something in this country, when we think about gun control issues that's happening right now is mental illness and people who are allowed to bear arms. You know, what are your thoughts on that and how are you concerned about that with your organization? Well, um, our organization is really advocating that we need to look at mental illness from a standpoint of firearms. Uh, if you look at all of the shootings that's, that's gone on, everything from Columbine on to you know the recent shootings that are going on today, there's one thing that's always in common is mental illness. And we're starting to see this as a trend and it's really worrisome that our government is really not talking about the mental illness issue. Um, they're talking about, well, we need to do away with these assault type of weapons, which you know, that can be anything. But really we're wanting to see if you want to talk about gun rights and things like that, if the government would actually include mental illness in these discussions and talk about that as an issue, then it would make a lot of people feel more comfortable who are pro-Second Amendment. So we don't see that. So we, we feel like, you know, when you have people who coming in to our country with mental illness and you see people that have um, these different disorders that they're very unstable, they should have a way that identifies these people not to have weapons and not to be able to bear arms. And that's one thing that we're looking at as a group is, you know, we want to protect people as well. If we have a state that allows open carry, we should also look at the mental illness aspect. We don't want someone who's mentally ill or walking around town with a gun on his hip. That would be a disaster for all of us. So I think there's a balance that we need away from an advocacy perspective. And uh, as a 501c3 organization, we're looking at that and we're talking about it. What, what effects does mental illness really have upon what's going on in the situation with the Second Amendment? And from a political perspective, your audience of, of who is on the site, would you say it's you know a, a certain political party or is it kind of a, a neutral zone across the board? Well, you know, we are a nonpartisan organization. Uh, we do not we don't represent the Republicans or the Democrats. Uh, we are a nonpartisan completely, and that's in our mission statement. Um, we're, the, the, the thing about us being a nonpartisan organization is both sides of the aisle are doing certain things. They're fighting about certain issues. We we're just want to be a, a no-nonsense organization that looks at it from a realistic perspective. Um, so that's our stance. Within food media, a lot of people have been kind of describing this website as like the Zagat guide for gun owners. Right. Do you feel like in the future that could be a potential guide of sorts? Well, we, you know, we, we got the idea from Zagat. I get the Zagat stickers every year and man, I was like, oh, we gotta put it up, we gotta put it up. And it has the Zagat 2014. If you look at our decal that we produce, it's 2AO 2014. And we'll send a, uh, a new uh, decal every year without, you know, just like Zagat, I don't re-register, they just resend it. So we're gonna be doing the same thing. So we got the idea from Zagat uh, on the sticker, on the decal. Um, we're, we don't wanna become a Yelp site where you can take reviews, but we do, we're thinking about like having it to where people can publish their menu and our business owners can put up information about their business um, that want to put it out publicly. And we may wanna give that opportunity to our members. But right now, like I said, everything is, pretty much kept um, secure and only through the app on the iPhone and Android. Do you have any other restaurants that you own? Uh, we do. Uh, we're in the middle of launching a new restaurant in Winchester, Virginia called The Cajun Experience that's going live around March 15th. That is one restaurant that we will not be promoting open carry or, um, I mean, I'm, I can't say that we would if some patron comes in open carrying, I'm not telling them not, you know, not to do it, but we're not going to promote it, and that's based off our agreements on our lease. Okay, so why why is that? Is that 
by the district or is that? Well, the, the business, the, the building we're in is owned by the city. So, you know, from a city perspective, there's politicians involved and they just prefer, and, and we, we understand, and we're, that should sell a lot of people that we're very open-minded people, we're not radicals or anything like that. So we, we respect, you know, our landlords. And if they say, you know, we prefer you not promote it, uh, we're not saying you can't, you know, come into the restaurant, conceal carrying. We're not telling you to do that, but if, please do not go out and promote this as a discount day. So we, we decided, okay, we'll, we'll agree to that on, the, on this new restaurant. And Leesburg is still open carry Wednesday, so that location will continue. What kind of food do you serve on any specials on open Wednesdays? Oh, open carry Wednesday. We don't have any unique names uh, for any of our dishes, but it is the same menu. We, we have a chef special every day that we you know will do it could be fried catfish smothered with crawfish etouffee or uh, crawfish stuffed beignets or um, uh, fried uh, chicken you know with red beans and sausage and fried pork chops or something like that so it, it varies every day based off what the chef wants to uh, cook that day leave the gun take the cannoli so to speak <laughs> we've heard that yeah. <laughs> Well, um, Brian Crosswhite, thank you so much for coming on the show today. No, thank you. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs>